started with the HTML. So we'll talk about what HTML is and what the format is and so on. The goal for this is you need to understand what the HTML is, um, why it's important for a QA function. So let's first talk about the terminology. Okay. So all of you have played around with the R phone application, right? So the server where actual application runs it is known as a web server. On the web server itself, when you access the application, right, you were first displayed a login page, and then you logged in, and it showed up whoever you logged in, either as administrator or dealer, their pages, right? And then when you click on it, it allowed you to get the loan calculator or a, a credit application and so on. So it, it was a collection of pages, right, depending on the action you took it. So that entire collection of pages is known as a website. Okay. Each of the individual pages itself is a web page. Okay. And the login page that you landed into it is your home page. So essentially, when you start your application, when you turn access the application from the browser, right? Remember the browser was here, right? Whatever your net uh, IE or a Chrome or Firefox, whichever one you access it, right? So the first page that comes in gets it that. And every time you try to access a page, through the URL it requests, goes to the web server, which looks at the request and identifies what page you're going to get displayed to. So if you look at it closely, every time you log in, then your URL will change. Then you add some, uh, take some an action, and then URL will change in the new page. Okay, so that's how the overall web sites and web applications work. So every time each of the web page goes in, right? Those web pages are essentially written into HTML. So. In the typically, when you try to build out your website, the first thing you do it is uh, identify what exactly you want to do it from the application, right? Uh, is this a, an application like Arflon, or is that application like Amazon where you want to sell some products? Every time you want to allow to show the product pages, then you want to have a shopping cart type of functionality, then you have an account management type of functionality. So you need to figure it out what all your application is going to do it. And based on that, you essentially identify how you want to regroup the information for that application. And, and then you come up with a general structure of pages and topics of how you want to do it. If you look into our flow and design document, right, there was a page flow that essentially followed through this process to say, hey, how I'm going to design my R1 application, how the information is going to be grouped together, how they're going to move away from one page to another page. Okay. So you will see this pretty much more or less similar layout in terms of coming up with how the web pages need to be. And you need, as a QA, you need to be aware of it, right, so that you can figure it out, hey, where should be my next page? when you look at the design document, and if you don't see a normal flow that is more intuitive, then you should ask questions to the designer. And say, hey, why did you put this way versus that way? Remember we talked about the usability aspect of it? That's what this thing comes through the design. So now let's talk about what is HTML. So once you come up with the design layout and the page, you need to start building out the pages, and that's where you use HTML, which stands for Hypertext Markup Language. Okay. It, it essentially, it, if you think about it, is a machine-readable instructions for the browser, because the browser goes and parses that language, 
and then figures it out what it needs to be done. Okay. So, in that language, right, you're going to have a whole bunch of what is known as tags. Okay. Those tags are the one which tells the your browser an instruction of what to do with the tags which is following that tag. So, for example, if I want to build a particular text within my browser page, right, I'll use the uh, tag known as B. I'll put whatever text I want to build it up, and I will end with an end tag. Okay. So, it tells me that start from this point onwards, everything that appears, keep making it bold till you encounter the end tag, which says that. Now, go back to the normal process. Most of the tags comes in pairs, but there are a few exceptions. For example, if I want to like start a new line, and I'll use a tag called browser. If I want to start a paragraph, I'll start P. LI stands for just list items, and so on. As I mentioned, right, the first tag turns on the action, second tag turns off the action. Okay. And you can nest the tags. Right? For example, you can have a title, right? But again, when you do a nesting, remember, like, the innermost tag comes first, start and end both, then outermost. You can't swap the positions, right? Because then it won't know it. If you try to do it, right, the machine instruction says, hey, I started with the title, but now my header is over. Now what do I do with the title? Right? So you need to mature. In HTML, the tags are not case sensitive. Sometimes you will see some attributes within the tag. Okay. Here's an important, right? Like it's, um, if you notice that we say that, hey, certain application works in certain browser and certain application won't work on browser. Part of the reason is that not all the browsers support the same functionality. They support more or less kind of a common set of functionality. And that's why you will see it, that there are some tags and some attributes won't be supported in one version of the browser, but they will be supported in a new version. So if, if, as a QA person, if somebody says that, hey, your application should work on this four target environments of browsers, you need to make sure that you test it in that. And if they are not, then most likely the issue is there are some tags that they used it or some plugins that they used it as part of the application that is now available in those browsers. So now let's take a look at the structure of a page. Okay, so let's write an HTML page. Most of the times, you will use it into uh, things like a notepad. There are some additional editors comes in that helps you making an HTML page, but you don't need anything. It's as simple as a notepad. HTML page starts at with the structure of giving HTML. Then I have a header. Inside that there is a title called hello. And then a body which says this is my first HTML page. Let's see what happens when I can save this page and create it. A couple of things you need to know if you are like 
try to create your own HTML page in a notepad, right? If you're trying to do it, first thing you need to do is change the type from a text document to all documents. You need to have an extension either HTM or HTML. Okay. And then I'm going to save it. So now it's saved as an HTM page. If you don't change the file name to all files, it'll, by default, will save as a text file. The title that I put in. Hello. Remember? So this was my title. And this is the text. So one of the things we talked about that I want to bold the text. It's a beat. So why don't all of you start a computer and just create this Hello World page? Okay. It's 917. Be able